you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. When you depend on him, you're gonna pray. When you depend on him, you wanna know how to pray. When you depend on him, you wanna know how to communicate with the one you depend on. You wanna talk to him about where you feel helpless. You wanna talk to him about your attitude, your character, what you said, what you shouldn't have said, how you said what you said. You wanna talk to him all the time. And you're depending on him to grow you up, to train you, to reprove you, to love you, to rebuke you. Uh, when it looks impossible in this world, because you depend on God, God will constantly cause you to rise above your impossibilities and to hope against hope because that's the one you depend on. This is the life of prayer. You can interact with Creflo Dollar Ministries anytime, anywhere. All of this is at your fingertips with our state-of-the-art custom-designed app. With the broadcast feature, you can access your favorite messages, sermon series, and more. Add events to your calendar, set reminders, get directions, share with friends, and even give securely through this platform. Visit creflodollarministries.org slash app or text app to 51555 today. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. Tonight we're going to talk about prayer, the believer's dependence upon God. Prayer is the believer's dependence upon God. You're praying because you're obviously depending on God to do something that you can't do. And so 1 Thessalonians, we're going to focus in on this really, really short scripture that is pregnant with revelation. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 17, he says this, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. And I did not have a chance to dig into this, or I don't think I've ever had a chance to dig into this, but we need to dig in it because it's so short, you think, well, there's nothing to it. Well, the, the first thing I want you to recognize is that praying without ceasing has to do more with attitude than the number of hours spent in prayer. Think about it again. Pray without ceasing has more to do with the attitude versus trying to keep up with the amount of minutes or hours that you pray. Now, notice, he, he, notice what he said and what he didn't say. He said pray without ceasing. He's talking about praying without ceasing. He didn't say praying constantly. You see the difference there? Not pray, he's saying praying without ceasing because he's focused more on the attitude he didn't say pray constantly. In fact, he had a little something to say about people who try to, 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 be, to, to, to pray constantly. Look at Matthew chapter 6 in the NLT, Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 7. So we're not trying to keep up with the minutes and the, and the hours that we pray. That's not what he's talking about. Matthew 6, uh, verse 5 and 7 warns us, he says, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. He says, I tell you the truth, that that is all the reward they will ever get. And verse 6 says, but when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, pray to your father in private, then your father who sees everything will reward you. Seven, when you pray, don't babble on and on as people of other religions do, okay? They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. So this is not talking about uh, uh, praying constantly. And, and, and somebody would think, you know, well, I, when I first saw that, I thought it was me meant praying constantly. I'm like, well, you got to sleep, you know? You got to eat. So you know he, we wasn't talking about that. So what we want to look at here tonight is what does prayer without ceasing mean? 
What does prayer without ceasing mean? I want to look at it from five per, uh, different perspectives. The first perspective is prayer without ceasing means the understanding and belief that God is right here with me and he is with me all the time. This, this, it's the attitude of understanding and believing that God is right here with me. The praying without ceasing, here's the attitude I have. God is right here with me, and God will be with me all the time, all the time. That's the attitude you have to have in order to see that scripture fulfilled. In fact, here's some evidence of that. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 in the Amplified Bible, Hebrews 13 and 5. You, you, you begin to practice this. As I give you these five ones, I want you to practice, wait a minute, God is with me all the time. God is with me all the time. That, that's going to really build your confidence up. I believe that God is right here with me. I believe he's with me right now. I believe he's with me all the time. Hebrews 13 and 5 says, let your character or your moral disposition be free from the love of money. All right, when you, when you have a love for money, that means you are valuing it more than you value God. Amen? He says, including greed and avarice and lust and cravings for earthly possessions. He said, be satisfied with your present circumstances and with what you have. For he, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you nor give you up nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless nor forsake, nor let you down, nor relax my hold on you, assuredly not. That's powerful, isn't it? In other words, God is not ever going to leave you by yourself. He's, he's, he, he's with you right now. Say that out loud. God is with me right now. Say this out loud. God is with me all the time. So from this first perspective, praying without ceasing, this attitude right here has got to be an attitude that God is always going to be with me and he's with me right now, all right? Let's look at the second one. Praying without ceasing means that our lives are constantly turned towards God. That my life, your life, it's constantly turned towards God. We recognize that everything in life involves God. That's powerful right there. We recognize that everything in life involves God. That's that praying without ceasing. My attitude that everything in life, in my life, in your life, involves God. In other words, it, it involves God because you get him involved in everything that's going on in your life. That we can't do life apart from him. This is us as Christian people saying we can't do life apart from God. Say out loud, I can't do life apart from God. I can't do life apart from God. That's that attitude you have to have. I can't do life apart from God. When you wake up in the morning and you begin to recognize, I can't do life apart from God. When you go to work, I can't do life apart from God. For without him, I'm nothing. I can't do life apart from God. See, we, 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 we majored on the mechanics and we forgot about the essence of the relationship. And praying without ceasing is this attitude that God is here. He'll never leave me. I, 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 I can't do anything without him. I've made my mind up to make sure that he's involved in everything that I do. That's what he's talking about here. Don't cease to do those things. Here's the third perspective right here. Praying without ceasing means that we put everything in God's hand. We put everything in God's hand. Therefore, we must seek him out and seek to pray about everything in our life. Everything in our life, everything is in his hands. Uh, baby need a pair of shoes, that's in his hands. How are you going to pay your bill, your money, your relationship, your children? Everything is in God's hand. That's that attitude that you got to have when you talk about praying without ceasing. It's in God's hand. And, and, and you have to initiate that that everything is in God's hand. I like in uh, the NLT in Philippians chapter 4 and 6. Watch this in the NLT, Philippians chapter 4 and 6. Everything is in God's hand. And I don't know what you may be going through, what you have gone through. Everything is in God's hand. Amen? Amen. Look what he said. He said, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. He just told you what to do. He says, everybody's going to have the potential to worry about 
a lot of stuff. But he says, don't worry about anything. Instead, or in, re in replace of worrying, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Yeah. Tell him what you need and thank him for all that he's done, praise the Lord. This is the attitude of someone who begins to live the life of praying without ceasing. It's an attitude, not the timing of, of your praying, your attitude. Let's look at the fourth perspective here. Praying what's, without ceasing, it means that one expresses a need that he himself is unable to satisfy. You express a need, you know you're not able to get, meet that need on your own. And then you acknowledge your dependence upon God to supply that which is needed. So you express the need knowing you can't meet it on your own. And then you acknowledge, I depend upon God to supply what is needed. It's the attitude there. See, that, that attitude there is always going to keep you uh, consciously aware and thinking about God. It's like practicing the presence of God is a constant awareness of him all the time. Yes. All the time that you're constantly aware of him. And when you're aware of God, you may find yourself talking to him or meditating on things or having conversations with him because you have the right attitude that represents praying without ceasing. You know, the essence of prayer is, first of all, acknowledging your helplessness and at the same time having confidence in God to supply the need. I, I, I go before God and I acknowledge the essence of saying, I'm helpless. I can't do this without you, okay? I acknowledge my helplessness and at the same time, I also acknowledge the confidence that I have in him. I, I, don't, I don't know what it's like, or maybe I don't want to remember what it's like to carry this attitude of, I don't need you, Lord, I'm good, unless something really, really horrific takes place, I'm good. God's not saying that things have to be going bad before you, you know, acknowledge that you need his help. Mm -hmm. He's like, I want you to need me even when everything's going good. I want, I, I want to know that you have a daily need for me in your life. Yes. Don't cease that, okay? You have a daily need for God in your life. Come say that with me. I have a daily need for God in my life every day. What, what I'm trying to do as a, what I'm trying to do as a pastor is I'm, if, over the last, especially a couple of months, trying to sow things into your life and you begin to begin the journey in this and disciplining yourself in this and practicing these things, and these things begin to work automatic on the inside of you. The Bible calls it renewing the spirit of your mind, okay? And I'm telling you, man, when you begin to uh, every day acknowledge, I have need for you today, Lord, and I have confidence that you are well able and equipped to meet my need, that's praying without ceasing. Don't stop doing that. Don't let that attitude disappear. And then all of a sudden now, because you're a Christian, been saved a little bit, have some experiences, that stops. And that's, that should not stop. It, it, your relationship with God and as a Christian should not be the sum total of a prayer, a song, a sermon, and home. That's boring. I don't want that. That's, that's, that's like a, a, a play or something. That's like a, no, 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 no. Your, your experience with God should be as unique as you want it to be because he's your God. Hallelujah. Now, let, me, let me stop. He's, 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 he's my God. And my conversations are unique and private with him. It's not cookie cutter, praise the Lord. This is the way we go to church, go to church, go to church, sing our songs and clap our hands. I ain't doing that. I won't do that no more. I want the unique experience of praying without ceasing and maintaining an attitude where I can go to God, say I'm helpless, be confident that he'll help me, and then continue in my dependence and leaning and depending on God. That's what this is about. Amen? Amen. And then the fifth uh, perspective of praying without ceasing this is pretty good. This is like, this sums it all up. And you take everything we just said, and here's what it means. It, 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 it's taking us right back to what we've been talking about the last few weeks. 
To pray without ceasing is to maintain a constant attitude of dependence upon God. That's it. Pray with, listen, this whole dependence upon God thing is started in the garden. It's the issue of the whole Bible. It's the issue of the whole. I don't know what people be doing with what happened in the Garden of Eden. And they be picking these little things out and it ain't none of that happened. I mean, it's, it's just, and you have to kind of back up a little bit from, from your religion and your way of understanding stuff. And you got to kind of go at it with a fresh pair of eyes. I've had to just really, even, even the stuff I've taught in, in my past, I've had to back up on all of it and just get a whole fresh pair and tell myself, now, Lord, help me. I want to see this with a pair of fresh eyes. And when I look at that whole deal in the Garden of Eden, that's absolutely what it was. Jesus, God, God told him exactly what was going to happen. He says, you may eat of all the trees of the garden freely. So I'm not holding them back. It's free to you. You may eat of all the trees of the garden freely. But this one right here, you can't eat of it because if you do, you're going to die. And then Satan creeps in the garden, hath God said, trying to create some, some doubt, hath God said, and then, 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 then talking to the lady. And, and it wasn't like Adam was on vacation and out of town somewhere. He was right there. <laughs> and, and, and uh, you know, hath God said, and she said, well, we may eat of all the trees of the garden, but for this one right here, we may not eat it, or the Bible says that we'll die. And here's what the, here's what the dude said, you shall not surely die. Well, God said you're going to die. You shall not surely die. He said, and watch him set him up to declare independence from God. You shall not surely die. For God knoweth the day that you eat of this, you will be just like him, knowing good from evil. And you know what they said? Oh, well, if we're going to be just like God, we don't need to depend on God. And they, they declared their independence by eating the fruit off the tree and declaring we are independent from God. We don't need him. And when they did that, the knowledge that they didn't have before, like, we naked. Ain't nobody talking. Nobody trained them to make clothes. So their lightning fast mind says, I'm going to make some clothes out of some fig leaves, which are sticky if you've ever gotten some fig leaves. And the whole thing was going into the garden, a spirit of independence. That's what Satan did in heaven. Let's deceive a third of the angels. Well, what deceive them to what? Declare your independence from God. We don't need you. That's what it was. And God was like, uh, y'all got the wrong phone number. Do y'all know y'all? There were millions of angels kicked out. Millions. Because they declared their independence from God. And hell was created for the devil and his angels and anybody else who want to try to declare their independence from God. That's the, that's the whole thing. And, and now, God is saying, now what do I need to do to get these people to see that they need me? Because before what happened in the Garden of Eden, they absolutely trusted and depended on God for everything. They naked. What are we going to eat? What are we going to do? The weather going to be right? It's going to be too... And they depend on... And all of a sudden, independence came, and those who had a free moral agent decided that they did not need God. And this prayer without ceasing is totally about maintaining the attitude of complete dependence upon God. And that's, that's what prayer, pray. I pray because I need God and I depend on him. I am, I am not, listen, yes, I'm praying about some needs that I have, I do that because I'm dependent on him. Somebody say, well, I don't believe in prayer. Well, you just told me you, don't, you ain't dependent on God. You're dependent on something else to try to get stuff met. But I believe in prayer is, is the attitude that, I, that you maintain because you depend on him. And when you depend on him, you're going to talk to him. When you depend on him, you're going to pray. When you depend on him, you want to know how to pray. When you depend on him, you want to know how to communicate with the one you depend on. You want to talk to him about where you feel helpless. You want to talk to him about your attitude, your character, what you said, what you shouldn't have said, how you said what you said. You want to talk to him all the time. And you're depending on him to grow you up, to train you, to reprove you, to love you, to rebuke you. Uh, when it looks impossible in this world because you depend on God, God will constantly cause you to rise above your impossibilities and to hope against hope because that's the one you depend on. Yeah. 
This is the life of prayer. It's not the mechanics. It's not the mechanics. It's the attitude. Amen. Now, let's look at Ephesians chapter 5 and 20. Ephesians chapter 5 and 20. Let's get a little picky here. He says, giving thanks always. I'm thinking always? Yeah, always. For what? For all things under God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we need to dig into this because there is no better expression of dependence upon God than in giving thanks. No better way of uh, expressing your dependence upon God than when you, when you give God thanks. Now, I don't know how we or what we thought about Thanksgiving, but it's huge, man. Don't let a day go by where you're not giving God thanks. Now, I'm getting ready to show you why. Don't let a day go by without you giving God thanks. Why? Well, on Sunday I mentioned this, and I, and I really went by real fast, and that's, that's, that's why I'm kind of doing this little brief review. Uh, prayer acknowledges your dependence upon God when you have a need. Prayer acknowledges, so when you go to God when you have a need, you're acknowledging I'm dependent on God because I have a need. But now thanksgiving is, it acknowledges you're dependent on God once that need has been met. You hear what I'm saying? So prayer, it demonstrates and acknowledges I depend on God when I have a need. All right, so when God meets that need, Thanksgiving acknowledges I still depend on God even when the need is met. The whole issue is, is about depending on God. But there are people who are dependent on God until they get what they want. That's, that's not cool. You're depending on God to meet your need, and then when he meets it, does it mean you, you, you no longer depend on him? Well, if you're not in thanksgiving, that's exactly what it means. Let me show you this in Luke chapter 17, verse 11 through 18, dealing with the ten leopards. They prayed uh, to Jesus to have mercy on them. All right, check this out. He said, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Next. And, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were leopards, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Do for us what we don't deserve. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourself unto the priest. Man, they're dependent on him. And it came to pass that as they went, as they went, they, they, didn't, even, they didn't even arrive to show themselves to the priest. As they turned and started going, they were cleansed. All right, now watch this. And one of them, how many? One of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud voice, glorified God or be began to thank God. And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. He was a Samaritan. Now, this is interesting because the Jews and Samaritans, there was some, some, some racial tensions here. And... Uh, this guy just got healed by a Jewish man, and he is now declaring that he is going to have complete dependence for this man called Jesus, who is a Jewish man. All right, now watch this. And Jesus answering said, uh, uh, hold on, let me holler at you for a moment for you. For you. <laughs> Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this one. Oh, so they acknowledged that they depended on him until they got what they wanted. You know, we know church people like that. When it's bad, 
Oh, God, help me. I'm coming to church. I ain't missing nothing. I'm going to go. I'm going to pray. I'm coming to everything. I'm even in departmental meetings. I just want to be about the presence of the Lord. And as soon as the Lord meet that need, you don't see them people no more. Who do you depend on to get things done in your life? Is it God or is it yourself? In his three-message series, How to Depend on God, Creflo Dollar dives deep into the benefits of total dependence on God. Nothing happens without you depending on God. I'm speaking to the mountain depending on God. I'm believing in my heart depending on God. He says, you can ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you because you depend on God. And when you ask, the bottom line, the foundation of all of the faith release is founded on complete dependence on God. And when you depend on God, it's an emptying of yourself. No self-will, no self-confidence, no self-effort. Order your series today for a love gift of only 20 U.S. dollars for CDs or 30 U.S. dollars for the DVD set. Simply call the number on your screen, scan the QR code, or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org and click eStore. Learn how to depend on God today. Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. You've got to figure out a way to maintain your meditation on Him. You've got to think on Him. I want my thinking to be on God. I want my thinking to be on His Word. I want my thinking to be on life. I want my thinking to be on His promises. Keep your mind stayed upon Him and walk in His presence. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. And how many of you know we've got to shine the light out so that we can see God and we can experience His plan for our life and we can see what He wants to do and turn situations around. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips, no matter where you are. Subscribe today on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. I pray that this broadcast blessed you today. I want you to pray about sowing a financial seed into this ministry. I also want to extend a special thanks to those of you who have remained our loyal partners, supporters, and friends. Your financial support goes a long, long way. Your donations help equip us with what we need to send this broadcast all over the world. And when you give to this ministry, you partner with us to reach people everywhere who are hurting and in need of the revelation of God's grace and love. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. God bless you. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.